This is the Mona Lisa. And if you weren't already convinced of three-year-old me's expert drawing skills, this is a self-portrait. <laughs> and to top it off, this is something I can't even begin to put into words, except for that it was art. It was my art. And from before I can even remember, I have been inseparable from art. I created endlessly and without bound, finding pure joy in spending hours with my Etch-a-Sketch or my 8 by 11 inch piece of paper and any color I could get my hands on at the time, from a box of old crayons to rocks to dandelions, anything. Now, it started as a whisper at first, and as I grew older, this narrative became louder and louder that art was a waste of time, frivolous. To any artists in this room and the artists in the world, this story probably f sounds familiar. We are used to the stories that the arts are merely decorative. We are used to the push of society's tides away from our artistic pursuits and into subjects deemed more practical or traditional, like science and math. Even in our education systems, as a piece by Forbes put it, the, school, the arts are seen increasingly squeezed out of schools in order to make room for more test-based subjects. In my generation, we know all too well the problems we have set up for us. Life-threatening problems flying at us a million miles per second. To name a few you're probably aware of, melting ice caps, deforestation, declining biodiversity, water depletion, so many problems. But what are our solutions? We can't turn back time, so our only way forward is innovation. There is a lot of emphasis on the value of STEM education as the one way to develop us as future innovators. But just as a machine is not built from one type of gear, rather it's made from a combination of gears from different shapes and sizes. Innovation, better innovation, more sustainable innovation, is developed through a combination of perspectives and skills, from math ones to science ones to, as I advocate, artistic ones. The first step to innovation is idea generation. Looking at the world around you and recognizing that there's even a problem in the first place. Then you take this problem, flip it upside down and inside out in order to find different solutions. The next step is to take action, actually walk the talk. And this is done by having grit, organization, and the right skills, of course. The opportunity to be artistic regularly can help us succeed at each of these steps of innovation. Let's talk about creativity. The first thing to grasp about creativity is that we do not have a fixed amount of creative ability. Rather, it's like a muscle that can be strengthened and honed over time. The second thing about creativity is that it is cool and awesome and amazing, especially from a scientific point of view. According to the American Psychological Association, creativity is actually like this unique puzzle piece that can connect two brain systems that would rarely work together otherwise. The first part of our brain is responsible for daydreaming and mind wandering. And this can help us pick up those problems worth solving. Creativity then links it to our executive functions responsible for planning, problem solving, and taking action. The more and more we practice being creative, the more we strengthen this muscle, the more automatic and natural the connection between these systems becomes. This is why having a tolerant environment which positively encourages art exploration and creative thinking is so crucial. It also just helps us refine our ideas by critiquing them, 
looking at them through different cultural and thematic lenses, and organizing ourselves to achieve the goals that we set. So to summarize, the opportunity to practice art regularly helps us tap into our creativity more automatically, which then allows us to develop a mind that quickly identifies problems and then solves them by having the skills to think through different viewpoints. Mary Oxman is a renowned biologist, engineer, and founder of MIT's Mediated Matter Research Group. But guess where she began? She started with art. Both of her parents were architects, so she grew up in this environment which cherished and encouraged design and artistic creation. She then went on to study an interdisciplinary blend of architecture with computational design, synthetic biology, and digital fabrication, allowing her to create some of the most pioneering and sustainable innovation in our day and age. She highlights the necessity for such eco-conscious innovations in her documentary, Nature X Human, which stresses that the anthropomass on Earth, mass created by humans, brick, concrete, glass, as of 2020, it has exceeded the biomass on Earth, mass created by nature. This means the weight of our plastic is now greater than that of all animal life on this earth combined. The weight of our infrastructure is now more than all trees and bushes on this earth. Alarmed by this notion, Neri and her team sought to explore alternative materials, which turned architecture from a force that separates us from nature to a force that reintegrates us with nature. This is a piece from her Aguahoja collection. It's a structure made from a plastic alternative material created with chitin, cellulose, and pectin. The same materials found naturally in trees, crustaceans, and apple peels. It's additionally adaptable to light, temperature, and humidity. Adaptable and sustainable innovation this is the power of a symbiosis between art and STEM. Special attention should be concentrated especially towards providing our opportunities for those in marginalized communities. As of the 2019 National Arts Education Status Report, in the US alone, there are an estimated 2.1 million students with a zero access to arts education. No music, no visual arts, no theater. Of these students, 26% of students in majority Native American schools, 6.9% of students in majority Black schools, and schools with majority free or reduced lunch eligibility have disproportionately less access to art education. These disparities can exacerbate existing inequalities by hindering the development of creativity and critical thinking skills among disadvantaged students. This is why it is so imperative that schools, policymakers, communities, all advocate and prioritize equitable art education for students by investing in resources and art initiatives like after-school programs, partnerships with local culture and art institutions, and community arts organizations. We can also just expand our mindsets and start to question how can all subjects become more interdisciplinary, fun, and stimulating by incorporating art? Let us embrace the boundless opportunities before us. Let us take our instruments, brushes, microphones, and let us sculpt our futures. In this journey of creation, we can discover our talents, become pioneers in the world of tomorrow, and discover the very essence of who we are. The world is eager to see the masterpieces and change to come. Thank you.